Today we're going to play a little bit of Zork together. The reason we're playing this game is one of the genres we're exploring is text-based adventures. So students in class are going to both review and analyze text-based adventures, uh, but also have the opportunity to create their own. And uh, for any of you out there who are as old as I am, uh, Zork is absolutely a, a classic in the genre. Um, anybody in here ever see this game or play Zork? No? no. no. Anybody ever play a text-based adventure game? Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail, but there are even little graphics in that a little bit, kind of, sort of, but it is, it is no similar way. in some ways. Um, but this is purely text, like all text. How about that? So um, there's something very, actually, um, interesting about text-based adventure games, and I hope you uncover that a little bit as we play, because I know... In this day and age, the idea of something that's purely text without great graphics or what have you um, might sound a little odd. But anyway, we're going to start here. So this is the way this game actually starts. So it gives us a little bit of information. We are west of the house. We're standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. Any ideas for what I should do? What? Enter the, house. Enter the house. Let's try that. Enter the house. I can't see how to get in from here. Hmm. Open the mailbox. Open mailbox. Good idea. Opening the mailbox reveals a leaflet. Anybody know what a leaflet is? <laughs> Any ideas for the leaflet? Read it. Okay. Read Leaf Lit. Okay. Zork, welcome to Zork. Zork is a game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. In it, you will explore some of the most amazing territory ever seen by mortals. No computer should be without one. Okay. So right off the bat, when we start thinking about games, we're going to be thinking a lot about game mechanics and how you play the game and stuff. What's the basic game mechanic in this game or how this game, how we actually, you know, let's say manipulate what we're doing in the game? Okay, you put your actions into words. Anybody get a sense for what the kind of structure or quasi-sentence structure would typically be? So I said, read leaflet, or take leaflet, or open mailbox. Are they framed? Yeah, how are they framed? It's usually a... Well, it's a fragment, but it understands things sort of in the <laughs> verb, noun kind of structure right what's that it, it the commands are done in that way right like in other words verb noun in a sense right so what you have to understand is it's going to be limited in what it understands so we have to kind of learn that a little bit um i think if we type help whoops that's not it nope doesn't even know help oh bummer um there are probably ways to find out a little bit about i forget how to find out a little bit about how to what it, what it wants us to do. But anyway, so we're still on the west of the house, I think, right? We have this wonderful letter that didn't really tell us anything. Um, if I look around again, it reminds us that we are standing in an open field west of a house with a boarded front door. There's a small mailbox here. What should we try next? What? Say again? I can't hear you. Move east. Okay, so that's all right. That's a good idea, at least. E or east would be commands the game would understand. Directions are something that text-based adventures do understand. The door is boarded, and you can't remove the boards. You got, if you're going to give a command, it's got to be louder so I can hear you. Around the house? Go around house. Oh, okay, that worked. Funny thing is I didn't think it was going to understand go around house, but it did. North of house, you're facing the north side of a white house. There's no door here, and all the windows are boarded up. To the north, a narrow path winds through the trees. Follow path. I wonder if it'll... Uh, you must specify a direction to go. North, okay. When, when you can, using the directions like north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, that's going to be the easiest way to... to move around. Forest path. This is a path winding through a dimly lit forest. 
The path heads north-south here. One particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. Climb the tree. Climb the tree. Climb tree. Oh, here we go. Up a tree. You're about 10 feet above the ground, nestled among some large branches. Okay, up a tree. You're about 10 feet above the ground, nestled among some large branches. The nearest branch above you is above your reach. Beside you on the branch is a small bird's nest. In the bird's nest is a large egg encrusted with with precious jewels, apparently scavenged by a childless songbird. The egg is covered with fine gold inlay and ornamented in lapis lazuli. Does that ring any kind of bell? Minecraft. Minecraft. How about that? That's crazy, huh? And mother of pearl. Unlike most eggs, this one is hinged and closed with a delicate looking clasp. The egg appears extremely fragile. Take the egg. Take egg. Taken. Now, interesting, I don't know if that was the one that did it, but do you see there's, I, you can barely see on your screen, but the score says five now. So, must have been something about the egg that scored us some points. So, what do we want to do now? Climb down. Climb down. Okay, we're back. Now, I tend to like to remind myself of my surroundings by hitting look when we are somewhere here. This is a path winding through the dimly lit forest. The path heads north-south here. One particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. What should we do? Yeah, it's the same tree, and I just climbed down it, so I'm back where we were before we climbed up it. Open the egg. Let's try Open egg. You have neither the tools nor the expertise. Seamus? All right, so which way? North or south? North. Okay, north. Clearing. You're in a clearing with a forest surrounding you on all sides. A path leads south. On the ground is a pile of leaves. Look in the pile of leaves. Look in pile of leaves. I don't know if that might be too much. You can't look inside a pile of leaves. What can we do with the pile of leaves? Move them. Move leaves. In a in disturbing the pile of leaves, a grating is revealed. Open grating. The grating is locked. Rats. So we're still in the clearing, I think. Yeah. What's that? Go south. South now again? Alright, forest path. Then why don't we go south again? That puts us back by the house. You are facing the north side of the house. There's no door here and all the windows are boarded up. To the north, uh, a narrow path winds through the trees. I'm still a little intrigued by the house. If we go north-south, we're going to be back in the woods, right? I mean, if we go south, we're probably going to be the west of the house again, maybe? Nope. That's just trying to get into the house. Any other ideas? Oh, okay, break boards. What do you want to break the boards with? With what? Do you have an axe? Okay, break boards with hand. Trying to destroy the board with yeah, with like Minecraft. Trying to destroy the board with a pair of hands is futile. Get a stick from the tree. So should we go back to the trees? All right, north. So, um, oh, listen to this, though. We didn't see this before, did we? You hear in the distance the chirping of a songbird. But you want to try to get the trees, huh? Break branch, maybe? There are low branches. What do you want to break the branch with? Break branch with hand. Trying to destroy the tree with a pair of hands is futile. With the fragile egg that's all gold encrusted and stuff? Let's see, break branch with egg. Trying to destroy the tree with a jewel encrusted egg is futile. What's that? Well, we've done that. Do you want to do it again? That's how we found the egg, right? Climb tree. Beside you, oh, on the branch is a small bird's nest. Take it. Take bird's nest. Taken. You hear in the distance a chirping of a songbird. 
What's that? Should we go maybe climb higher? Yeah. Oh, that climbed us back down. Okay, so we're in the forest path. So far, we've done some things like we've uncovered that grating, but it's locked. So that kind of leaves us somewhere with something we probably want to do eventually, right? We, we're by the house, but we haven't done anything at the house, really, because we haven't been able to get in. And we hear a songbird in the distance. Any ideas? What? It's got to be louder. No? Keep going north? We can try it. Uh, we did the pile of leaves. Let's go north again. The forest becomes impenetrable to the, impenetrable to the north. All right, let's go back south. I'm still intrigued by the house. So what can we... Yes, Seamus. Um, let's try that. West. All right, we're west of the house. That's where we started a while ago. What? How about if we go south? South of the house. You are facing the south side of the house. There's no door here, and all the windows are boarded. East. Behind the house. You are behind the house. A path leads into the forest to the east. In one corner of the house, there's a small window, which is slightly ajar. Enter window. Enter window. The kitchen window is closed, but it is ajar. How about if we just try to open it? With great effort, you open the window far enough to allow entry. Now should we enter the house? All right, now things are going to change a little bit. We're in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen of a white house. The table seems to have been used recently for the preparation of food. A passage leads to the west, and dark staircase can be seen leading upward. A dark chimney leads down... The east is a small window which is open. On the table, there is, is an elongated brown sack smelling of hot peppers. A bottle is sitting on the table. The glass bottle contains a quantity of water. Drink the water. Drink water. You have to be holding the glass bottle first. How about take bottle? All right, now what? Drink water. You'll have to open the glass bottle first. Okay, now let's try to drink the water. Thank you very much. I was rather thirsty from all this talking, probably. Okay, what else do we see around that we might want to explore? Wait, we could try to go upstairs in a minute. Did it say there were... Um, take the right, well, take the peppers or take peppers. How about the bag? Yeah. Take bag, um, open bag, a lunch, and a clove of garlic. Hmm. Oh, look, and we're up to 15 points. I don't know if you noticed that. So we've been getting some score here and there, maybe for finding the, the getting in the house and stuff. So what do we want to do now? Eat the garlic. Eat, the garlic? Eat garlic. What the heck? You won't make friends this way, but nobody around here is too friendly anyway. Anyhow, gulp. I hope we don't need that garlic for anything else. I'm going to check my inventory. I think we could do that. So we have all that stuff. We don't have the garlic anymore. Uh-oh. Now, what do we want to do? We're in the house. Let's look around again. So, a passage leads to the west and a dark staircase leading upward. West? West is the living room. You're in the living room. There's a doorway to the east, a wooden door with strange gothic lettering to the west, which appears to be nailed shut, a trophy case, and a large oriental rug in the center of the room. Above the trophy case hangs an elvish sword of great antiquity. A battery-powered brass lantern is on the trophy case. Take the sword. Take sword. Take sword. Okay. What else? Should we take the lantern? Okay. And what about the trophy case? Anything interesting about that? You want to take it? I don't know if we could take a trophy case, but let's see. The trophy case is securely fastened to the wall. Open trophy case. It's open. Anything you want to put in the trophy case? No, Just thinking. The egg. The egg. The egg. Put egg in trophy case. All right, that just gave us five more points, so that's good. That was obviously something good to do. So now, again, we're in here. We have something in the trophy case now. Um, oh, your tr collection of treasures consists of. So the trophy case, clearly, what's the purpose of the trophy case? Yeah, to put our artifacts and stuff. Okay, so we have something in there now. 
All right, what do we want to do now? Explore the rest of the house. Okay, and maybe we will. Um, but for there, I'm probably going to get a, wind down the recording and get to a point where y'all could play on your own, um, as much fun as it was to play together. Uh, but what do you get? Tell me a little bit about your understanding or perspective now of this genre of a text-based adventure game. And if you want, you can come up and talk to the actual microphone so we can hear you. You know, as you're thinking about different types of games, first of all, I guess I'll ask a few questions. Do, what would be involved in making a game like this? What would be involved in making a text-based adventure game? Well, coding, perhaps. What else? What would you have to do kind of in preparation of making the game? Create a story. Create a story. Quite a story, right? What, are, what is the player relying completely on in this game? Seamus? Well, the clues that the text gives, right? What else is kind of um, going to hinge whether or not this game is even remotely enjoyable or not? What's pretty important in a text-based adventure game that might change it from the dynamic of what's important in like a rich graphic game? What is the player relying completely on? What? Well, the directions is part of it, but what else? I mean, in other words, what would engage a player in a text-based game that would make it interesting enough for them to want to play it? Anyone? The plot, twist. the plot twists, the story, the narrative, right? This is a crucial element in this kind of game. Very different from you know, an action-packed game with, where the game mechanics are all based on the fun gameplay that way. What's that? The, who would you be, who here would be interested in writing their own text-based adventure? Yeah. What's that? Anybody? In, in uh, the first semester, and I'll show you some examples, we had probably about eight kids make text-based adventures. Some as one of the quests, some as their final project. Um, and they really got into it. There are some great tools to help you, you know, make them from the coding standpoint, but the story and narrative is obviously very important. So I will stop there. Um, this One of your quests is about looking into the text-based adventure, writing a review, and all of that.